Hey everybody out there, this is Andy Duffy bringing you another daily devotional. I'm out this evening, uh, Sunday evening. It's a beautiful night. The wind is just the right amount of cool and strong. The temperature is still pretty warm. The, uh, the moon is out. The stars are kind of overcast. Um, I thought it would be a lovely night to bring you this message. And of course Bobo is here with me. Bilbo, I want to say hi, Pastor Bilbo, to everyone out there. You probably can't see him anyway. But trust me, he's here. Bilbo is always watching. So I'm bringing to you a message tonight, continuing the story of Jesus in his last week um, in worship. Uh, this morning I talked about Jesus' first trial before the Sanhedrin, the Jewish High Council, a religious trial where they were trying to find a charge to justify trying to get Jesus killed. So Jesus has, uh, is in his long night, is in his, uh, his most difficult time of trial, literally and figuratively. And while all this is going on, of course, his disciples abandon him, except uh, one disciple follows along a little ways, and we're going to read his story continuing tonight. This comes from Mark chapter 14. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene Jesus, she said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow was one of them. Again he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them. You are a Galilean. He began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man you're talking about. Immediately the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Interestingly, the four Gospels don't have a whole lot of variation on the details of this particular part of the story. Um, Matthew, Luke, John all adapt somewhat who's asking Peter the questions. Um, the language they use might differ in small ways, I would say. The number of times the rooster crows, right? But surprisingly similar, right? This is a, this is a core story of all four Gospels, that Peter, the most trusted, uh, the most, um, some might say in some circumstances, most faithful, certainly the leader, certainly the one that Jesus puts most of his trust in to lead the church, he messes up royally uh, on the night when Jesus needed him the most. And of course Jesus predicted this at the Last Supper, we talked about that last week, and here it's actually happening. And, and I, it always breaks my heart when I hear the Gospel writer say, and he, Peter, broke down and wept. He knows immediately, he remembers, right? It's like, it, Jesus predicted this just a few hours ago, but he'd already forgotten. Um, there is one other line from another gospel I think is interesting, and that's in Luke. In Luke's version of Peter's denial or disowning of Jesus, after he denies the third time, right before the rooster crows, Luke says, the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Right? It's like, they're somehow close enough, right? Jesus is, is on trial, but he must have some sort of line of sight, right? Oh, somehow there's a recognition. Jesus knows what Peter has done, and it just, oh, right? Oh, no, I, know, I see what I've done, and he knows, right? There's no hiding it, right? But we also know that Jesus already said at the Last Supper, after you turn back, Peter, go back to your brothers, right, to lead them, right? There's this all, he should already know that he's forgiven and that there's hope and that there's a future for him. Uh, Peter sinned, 
what does that say about Christianity, right? That our, our founders were imperfect people, human beings, right? I assume all of you are human beings. Uh, we aren't founded by angels, but people who really messed up uh, in some of the worst ways. Peter sinned, Peter sinned over and over. Peter had a habit of sin, of forgetting things he had just heard, of being afraid when it was most needed for him to have courage. That gives me hope for those of us who have not only sinned, but sinned repeatedly, but have habits of sin, right? Things that we struggle with on a regular basis. Yeah, well, so did Peter, right? Jesus doesn't demand perfection. Just honesty and hope. I think uh, sometimes people talk about the three strikes you're out rule, right? In baseball. And sometimes we like to use that in our relationships with one another, right? You know, if you if you mess up three times, it's over, right? Bilbo? If Bilbo gets in the trash can three times, we're getting a new dog. Bilbo? Are you going to repent? I don't know. He's going to have to think about that for a little while. But, you know what? I don't think we're going to give up the dog just because he gets in the trash can three times. Uh, likewise, God isn't going to give up on us just because we screw up. I don't know how many times. Way more than three. Jesus tells Peter on a different occasion, how many times should we forgive one another? Seventy times seven. Which I don't think is meant to be an equation. But to say... Always forgive. Always seek out good relationships. Always hope the best for people. Uh, even if we can't accept them back on the same terms. Don't hold grudges. Don't be vindictive. Right? Because God isn't like that. We don't worship a God of punishment, but a God of grace. Um, so, no matter how many strikes you have, or you think you have, Know that God is not interested in throwing you out. If anything, we're more likely to throw ourselves out because we struggle to forgive ourselves. But God doesn't deny or disown us. We do that to God, but God doesn't do it, it back to us. That knowledge alone should be enough that maybe some of us might turn back to God. Whatever you've been through... Man, the wind blow again. Man, something significant going on. If you got something going on, just know that God's with you and God's forgiven you. It's going to be a hard road ahead for Peter and for Christ. Uh, I welcome your comments. We'll have more to say tomorrow. Good night, everybody.